Hello, hello, friends. Welcome to Life Class with Ayum. I'm so excited that you have made out this time to join me. So thank you so much for joining me. And if today is your first time, this is Life Class with Ayum. Life Class with Ayum is brought to you by My Pain Your Gain Ministries. And in this place, we teach practical things, share practical life experiences of how we have overcome obstacles so that you can learn and you can get nuggets on how to navigate life. So I'm sure you are in for a great time today. And if you are joining us, you've never liked this page or subscribed to our YouTube channel, this is the time to do so. So hit that subscribe button right now if you are watching on YouTube. And when you subscribe, make sure to turn on the notification button so that anytime we come live like this, you'll be notified. And if you are watching on Facebook, like us so that you can also get notifications from us and join us to be blessed. So you are welcome. Today, I'm so excited about the topic that I want to talk about. And for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be speaking on this subject. And the subject is, what does it take to stop you? What does it take to stop you? I want you to ask yourself that question. What does it take to stop me? What does it take to stop me? You realize that there are many stoppers in life. There are what I call stoppers of destiny. There are things that as you set out on the journey of life, as you go out to fulfill the destiny that God has for you, as you go out to do the assignments that God has put in your heart, there are so many things that, stop, that stay in the way to stop us. And the question I'm asking is that, what does it take to stop you? And the reason why I'm saying what does it take to stop you is because what stops me may not be necessarily what stops you. But there are a, common, there, there, there are a list of common things that stop people. And in the course of this, the four, maybe the next four weeks, I'm going to be talking on this subject and I'm going to be sharing on one of them, one after the other, so that we can examine these things and we can see if there's any way in our life that those things are stopping us. And if they are stopping us, how can we overcome that? that, that, that how can we overcome them? That is the purpose of this teaching. What does it take to stop you? What does it take to stop you? I'm going to be using Nehemiah as my case study. And Nehemiah is a character in the Bible and it's also a book in the Bible. So I'm going to read from Nehemiah chapter 1. I'll read verse 2 to 4 because of time. And then I'll, mo I'll, I'll move on to um, verse 11 in chapter 1 again. So Nehemiah chapter 1. So if you, if you have your Bible, you can open with me. This is a study time. So you can read it for yourself and see that what I'm saying is actually from the Bible. So Nehemiah chapter 1. From verse 2, it says, it says, Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who have just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity, um, about how things are going in Jerusalem. Verse 3 says, they said to me, things are not going well for those who have returned to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. And of course, if you go to verse 4, it says, When I heard this, I sat down and I wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted and prayed to the God of heaven. And he went on in verse 5, continuing to, to, to mention the prayer that he prayed. And then when I jump to verse 11, it says, one of the prayers he prayed was that, Oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of, of, those of us who delight in honoring you. Pre please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put into his heart to be kind to me. Praise the Lord. May God bless the reading of his word. So yes, I just read that portion to us just to bring out what I'm about to talk about. So I'm talking about what does this take, take to stop you? And then before I even continue, I want to read, I want to read again chapter 2 of Nehemiah. Chapter 2, I'll read verse 1 and 2 and then I'll move to verse 10. So Nehemiah chapter 2 now, verse 1 and 2. 
It says early the following spring in the month of Nisan, during the 12th year of King Atasas's reign, I was serving the king his wine. I had never before appeared sad in his presence. So the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. Then I was terrified, but I replied. I'm, going to, I'm not going to mention his reply there now, but you can go on and read the whole chapter for yourself. Read the whole of chapter one and chapter two. And actually during this month, I encourage you to read the whole of Nehemiah. It's just a few chapters. So I want you to note that I was deeply terrified. And then when I jumped to verse 10 of the same Nehemiah chapter two, verse 10 says, but when Sabalat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard of my arrival, they were very displeased that someone had come to help the people of Jerusalem. All right, so what does it take to stop you? What does it take to stop you? I said there are so many stoppers in destiny. As we set out to fulfill our destiny, you find that a lot of things are going to raise up their heads to stop you. And when we talk about, even though I'm saying, what does it take to stop you? Sometimes the question can be, who does it take to stop you? Because sometimes it is things that stop us and sometimes it is people that stop us. And when I'm talking about people that stop you, you can also be one of the people that stop yourself. So what does it take to stop you or who does it take to stop you? What does it take to stop you or who does it take to stop you? Today, I'm going to be looking at fear. Fear. Fear is one of the great things that stop many people in life. The reason why a lot of people get paralyzed, a little, uh, the reason, and when I'm talking of paralysis, I'm not talking of just physical paralysis, I'm talking of being weakened, that they cannot go out and do those things that are in their hearts to do, is because of fear. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 2, where I read, the Bible says, Nehemiah mentioned there, he said, I became terrified when the king asked him, why are you sad? You don't look sick to me, so why are you sad? Something must be troubling your heart. Nehemiah said, the, the version that I read, which was the New Living Translation, says, I was terrified. Some other translation will say, I became, some other translation says, I became dreadfully afraid. I became dreadfully afraid. So Nehemiah was scared. He was scared to death, as people will say, when the king asked him, why are you afraid? And when I read that, the question that came to me is that, what was Nehemiah afraid of? What was Nehemiah afraid of? Of course, I believe he had genuine reasons to be afraid because the custom as it was then that is that you don't appear before a king with a sad face because one of your, one of your job as a subject of a king, as a servant of a king is to make him happy. You are there to make life comfortable for him. You are not there to add um, distress to his life. So Nehemiah being the cup bearer, the person that serves the, uh, the king, his wine, is supposed to be always cheerful. And based on what the king said there in, 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 uh, in Nehemiah chapter 2, he said, I have never seen you sad before, so what is the problem? And I believe when he said that, Nehemiah became aware of his disposition. Maybe he was so troubled by the news that he had read, that we, that we read about in chapter 1 when some of his brethren came to visit from Jerusalem and they brought the news that the, the, the walls of Jerusalem had been torn down, the gates had been burned with fire. When he heard that news, he was terrified. I mean, he was troubled and he was praying and interceding for, for the people of his nation, Jerusalem, because that is where he's originally from. And I believe he didn't know that as he was, as he was, as he was um, traveling the presence of God, this thing was now showing on his face that when he came to serve the king, his wine, the queen could see that Nehemiah is not himself today. Something is disturbing him. Something is bothering him. And that was when the king made that remark, why, why is your face sad? And I, I was asking, what was he afraid of? I'm sure he was afraid of maybe being hurt by the king. Because if it's the custom that as a servant of the king, I should never have a sad face. Maybe having a sad face now could cost me my life. Maybe, maybe having a sad face could cost me my job. I'm sure some of those were some of the things that Nehemiah was considering. 
And that is why he became dreadfully afraid. Or maybe he was now afraid because if you read chapter, if you read them chapter one, when the people brought the news about Jerusalem being broken down, the Bible says it was in late autumn. But at this time that he was serving the king wine and his face was sad, it was in early spring. That is to say that there was a time gap between when he heard the news and when he was serving the king wine. And I'm sure during that time gap, he was still praying, he was still interceding. And maybe it was when he came to the peak of when this thing ought to go through. That was when he was no longer able to hide his face any longer. And that was when the king could notice that, yes, Nehemiah, your face is sad. So what was he afraid of? Probably he was afraid of being hurt. He was afraid of losing his life. He was afraid of maybe losing his job. And that is why he was afraid. So bringing it closer home, when we ask ourselves, what does it take to stop you? What does it take to stop you? My question to you is that, what does it take to stop you? I'm sure fear has stopped you in one area or the other. Or maybe fear is still stopping you right now. Does it take fear to stop you from doing that which God has asked you to do? Does it take fear to stop you from stepping into the next level that God has for you? What does it take to stop you? Somebody once defined fear as false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Because most of the time, the things that we are afraid of, if you end up getting up and confronting those things, you will discover that they are not as bad as you, you think they were. They, 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 they did not have the consequences that you think they were going to have. So my admonishment to you today is that don't let fear stop you any longer. Don't let fear stop you any longer. If before now fear has been stopping you and you've not been able to do those things that God has put in your heart to do, then the time has come for you to overcome that fear. Because many times the things that you're afraid will hurt you never end up hurting you. And then another fear again, because there are so many kinds of fears that we have. We have the fear of being hurt. We have the fear of rejection. That is another fear. So many times people are stopped in life because they are afraid that people will reject them. They want to take a step, but they, they, because, but they feel that taking this step might make me feel a uh, uh, fall out of, out of a friendship with certain people. It might make certain people not like me any longer. It may make people to reject me. And because of that, they stay back. But I want you to remember, brethren, that Jesus Christ, who is our perfect example, was rejected. So it, rejection should not stop you. As a matter of fact, when you are doing certain, if you are doing things and everybody is accepting what you are doing, you should question what you are doing. You should question, is this thing having the impact it ought to have? Because rejection is part of the process of growing. It's part of the process that you are stepping out of your comfort zone. You are doing new things. So don't let rejection stop you. And then another fear that can stop us again is the fear of failure. The fear of failure. This fear has crumbled so many people. A lot of people don't do things because they are afraid to fail. So is the fear of failure stopping you? Is the fear of failure stopping you? So many times you want to do something and the first question that comes to your mind is that, what if I try and I fail? But I'm wondering if you also flip the question around and you ask yourself, what if I try this and I succeed? What will it feel like? What will the result be like? And I'm sure if we begin to turn it around, we will we, we, we give less room to the fear of failure and we'll step out to do those things that are in our hearts to do. And each time I think of the fear of failure, the story of Thomas Edison comes to my mind. I'm sure many of you may have heard the story of Thomas Edison, how he failed several times, failing, quote now, when he was trying to invent the light bulb. And as a matter of fact, after he did the experiment 10,000 times and he did not still succeed, a reporter came to him and asked him the question. He said, Mr. Ed uh, Mr. Edison, how does it feel to fail 10,000 times in your present adventure? And then Mr. Edison replied to him and said, young man, since you are just getting started in life, I will give you a thought that should benefit you in the future. 
I have not failed 10,000 times. I have successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. And Mr. Anderson, it was, it was estimated that he tried the experiment 14,000 times before he eventually succeeded in perfecting the incandescent light, which is the light bulb. So don't let the fear of failure stop you. Don't let the fear of failure stop you. Because many times, those things that you are afraid you, you will fail. Yes, you may fail, but at the end of the day, if you keep at it, you will get better at what you are doing. And you find that, that eventually you will get to the destination that God has for you. So don't let fear stop you. We are talking about what does it take to stop you. And the antidote for fear, if you are trying to deal with, 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 with them, the stopper of fear, the antidote for it, the antidote for it is do it afraid. Do it afraid. Because the truth is that everyone feels fear. If you are doing something for the first time, you are going to feel fear. Your hands are going to be shaky. Your voice may even be shaky. You may feel trouble. You may feel like you are, your, 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 your stomach is, is like just troubling you and you're about to, to throw up. But stepping out and still doing it in spite of fear is the antidote for fear. And I heard Jesmaya say that one time and it radically changed my life because I said, wow, it's not when God says, don't be afraid. It's not that you will not feel fear, but it means that step out in boldness and do it in spite of fear. And when you do that, you find that fear will gradually lo lose its grips over you. If you were so frightened the first time, and you do it the second time. You may still be frightened, but not as much as you were the first time. If you lose your sleep because, or if you are losing your sleep because of something that is about to happen, if you do it a couple of times, you find that you will no longer lose your sleep because you are now getting comfortable in doing it and you are getting better in doing it. And I was made, I was made to understand that there are 365 fear not in the Bible. And of course, you know that we have 365 days in a year except for a leap year. So that means that each day of the year, there is a tablet of fear not for you to take from the scriptures. So I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister, don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear stop you. So my question to you today is, in what way is fear stopping you? In what way is fear stopping you? Ask yourself that question. And maybe go back again and listen to what I have said today. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear stop you. Every one of us experience fear. But the difference is that why some people allow it to stop them, some never allow it to stop them. And that is why those that never allow it to stop them keep moving forward. So thank you once again for joining me today. And I want to end with this quote by Winston Churchill. The quote says, success is not final. Success is not final. And failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Praise the Lord. Success is not final. And failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that matters. So don't let fear stop you. The fear of failure, the, the, the fear of rejection, the fear of being hurt, or whatever kind of fear that you may be feeling that I have not talked about today, don't let it stop you. It is time for you to get up and begin to fulfill that glorious destiny that God has for you in Jesus' name. And if you are watching this, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to do so right now. Because one of the advantages that we have as children of God is that you, we have the Holy Spirit that lives in us and he's there to strengthen us. When we feel fear, we can cry out to God and he helps us and he gives us the courage to keep going. So if you are watching this, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ right now, I want to give you the opportunity to say so, to do so by saying this simple prayer after me. So repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day. I come to you right now. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I cannot help myself. I pray, Lord, that you will have mercy upon me. Please forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood and make me a new person. 
in Jesus name. Thank you Lord for forgiving me my sins in Jesus name. Amen. Congratulations and thank you so much for saying that prayer. You are now a child of God and welcome to the family of God. I want you to find yourself a Bible-believing church in whatever locality that you are watching this from. I'm sure there are, there, there are places that you can, you, can, you can find and join and begin to worship so that you can grow in this your newfound faith. And if you are looking for some somewhere and you need help, send me a private message. I can help you to, to make investigation, do a research in the area that you live and I can recommend a church to you. And if you live in the Reading area in the United Kingdom, I want to invite you to where I worship, which is the Deliverance Center, the Globe. You are welcome to worship with us anytime and we'll be happy to have you. Remember, as you step into this week, don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear stop you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and I'll see you again at the same time next week for another session of Life Class with AUM. Until then, just stay blessed. Thank you.